Again and again, coming to the mountains, even though it's like, you know, uh, the same area, but on a different mountain, it's just like, it's astounding to look at and to be, uh, to get that feeling of like, aweness, you know, like being taken aback. Yeah, what I find really interesting over here, it's like, you know, this is like, this is a little mountain here that uh, divides two like very different places. Like on the left hand side, people over there, they speak like a completely different dialect than the people towards the right. Like on the left is uh, the roads, the channels lead to, to, to Germany, so people there would speak like high German. And then the people on towards my right, just down here, they would speak like a very different kind of Austrian dialect, even though they're like, so, they're like just here and there. I always find this kind of, uh, I don't know, <laughs> amazingly um, interesting. Ah, oh, but yeah, we got here Friedestein on the left, and then Biberkopf, such a beautiful, beautiful vol volcanic looking mountain, uh, all the way over there, the far end. And, uh, and this is Alberg. Alberg. And then all the way in the back, like even though it took me like an hour to come over here, uh, I can see like where I where I live, and it doesn't seem so far away from up here. <laughs> it seems very close by. Seeing all these mountains from up here, like it's it's. Uh, makes the world look smaller and amazing.
garden vegetables with risotto. A risotto it is. Oh man. Cannot wait to munch away. I'm just like hop in my sleeping bag and doze off. I mean, it's like 7.30 p.m. I think. Mmm. Absolutely nothing like a warm meal in a freezing body. <laughs> Just tastes heavenly. Sure is nice drinking a cup of coffee with a view like this. I really love the the calmness and uh, the stillness that I feel when I'm doing something like this. It's almost as if I feel like uh, like I've adopted a different mind or something. <laughs> like I'm a different person or something. It really brings me down. really makes me feel more 
<clears throat> I don't know if it's uh, if it makes me feel feel more myself or if it makes me feel the self that I really like. I'm gonna go with the first one. <laughs> I think this because uh, I feel really really comfortable being how I am when I'm out here. Why can't I just retire already and do this every day? <laughs> I tend to think like, uh, you know, if I were to do this every day, if I would have felt the same as I do now. I'm not quite sure. I, uh, I think there's an element to it, you know, when you, <clears throat> when you don't do this too often, when you don't do a certain thing too often, you tend to uh, be attracted towards it a little more, and when you do it too often, you tend to forget the, the feeling, the original feeling that you get from it, being spoiled by gratitude. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, um, something that's been on my mind is uh, the fact that I'm filming myself and what it really means. <laughs> but uh, I really think, I mean, I film myself, I film this tour, this trip, or at least I like to think so, that, um, for the very reason of... Um, letting know towards other people what there is and uh, how a person can really attain this uh, sense of uh, fulfillment, gratitude and just enjoyment, you know? Aren't these like things that we that we seek in everything that we tend to think as entertainment or things that we do in our free time. Don't we go after those those things? To fulfill ourselves and entertain ourselves and basically entertain uh enjoy. I think uh it's quite a uh, I feel like it's kind of an obscure thing to do, to go out on your own and immerse yourself into nature. Uh, mostly because of fear, I think, and because of all the organization and planning and stuff like that, but it really is not as big of a factor as it should be. First of all, the, the point of fear, I think, uh, you know, once you have a little understanding of the nature around you, uh, and know how to react towards certain kinds of like climate conditions and uh, wild wild animals. I think I don't have a, I don't have a full understanding towards wild animals around here, but. Um, like the fundamental uh, approach towards it is not fearing it, but rather, you know, not being completely aware and, uh, you know, seeing how you should react and stuff, uh, but rather more of a soft approach, like you're seeing a bird or something. <clears throat> And that goes hand in hand with organization as well, like uh, being prepared for uh, if there's like a, a strong wind or something, like you've got yourself protected, you got yourself sheltered, and staying warm, getting yourself a good sleeping bag. <laughs> You're good, and good set of clothing. And knowing the limitations of that, and that's pretty much, <coughs> I think, mostly it. Food, of course, I mean, doesn't really take that much planning as one would think. And the reward you get from that. I 
It's immense. I mean, it's it seems silly or, uh, you know, unwantful to sit out here doing nothing but sipping on a cup of coffee, staring outside when you can do that at home. But uh, it's not the same. It's really not the same. And every little noise, uh, those vibrations that you notice, like within your uh, within your house or whatever kind of adds an element of distraction or like an element of um, not really completely being there. And when you're out um, in a place where there's nobody, none of that noise that you get from when you're at home, sitting out on your balcony, when there's none of that, you, uh, your focus tends to dive in to your surroundings. Uh, the surroundings of silence and uh, being here completely. I'm not saying that uh, that I'm always here, here, you know, like sometimes, yeah, I'm just, you know, trying to sort out <clears throat> my things in a tent or the camera or, you know, trying to find a spot and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a a little indecisive in those things like I always like you know go like hmm maybe this spot hmm, maybe that spot and I go back and forth or maybe uh, I want to place my tent in this sort of server position or the other and my focus tends to go on that but it's all right it's uh, it's all right the moment when the moment I get when I'm sitting here this moment of Peace and quiet and silence is um, the overall um, I, don't know, I don't know if I want to say objective, but the feeling that I'm seeking. And it comes along eventually. Of course, uh, talking to a camera <laughs> does take an ele a little bit of an element out of it, I guess, maybe, uh, in putting yourself completely into nature, so... I would, of course, rather not film if I was seeking only for that, but I guess my other reason for... Um, Like the sub reason for being here is also to like uh, to film because I really like capturing capturing this experience. Not only for uh, not only for sharing, but also for myself. Believe it or not, <laughs> I like to go back to it and take a look, see what it is like, remember the feelings. It's kind of like a a visual jur uh, visual journal. And I like to um, spice it up <laughs> and, you know, make a nice one. Maybe make it seem a little better than it actually is, but I don't know if that's true. Because what I, what I uh, frame in my shots is the frames that I tend to see and I want to capture it in the same way I see it. And that's the um, point of excelling <clears throat> in uh, the art of whatever you do. For me, in this case, it's filming, it's photographing, capturing. This coffee is really good. If I were to drink this at home, because this is actually old coffee. I've had this in my bag for maybe about three weeks or so, or more. Usually I'd be like, oh no, that's too old. It's It's been airing through the bag for some time and 
I don't, I would not notice a taste if I were to drink this at home or at work. But drinking it out here, the tense is, the tense, the taste is intensified. <laughs> Where I'm at is a place called um, um, well, the specific point where I'm at, I don't know, but uh, it's called Schröcken. Schröcken is a place in Bregenzerwald and there are many lovely mountains around here. I slept really, really fine. Like last night, it was really cold. I uh, I had to really jump in my sleeping bag as soon as I could because it was freezing. I think it was about zero degrees Celsius. And uh, but it for some reason felt colder. I don't know why. We had something to do with a, a dew point or something. It wasn't humid though. pretty dry and windless too. Just one of those cold windless nights. But I slept really fine. As soon as I got my sleeping bag I felt really nice and toasty and slept throughout the night uh, quite easily and quite thoroughly. Sometimes I feel like I sleep better <laughs> in this 50 centimeter wide sleeping pad. Uh, a pillow made out of uh, a dry sack this is my pillow right here but um, I feel it I feel it with my with my jacket it turns pretty nice and plush and uh, I sleep really really fine I feel like mattresses are one big scam <laughs> But I don't know, I, I, if you were to ask me if I were to sleep on the sleeping pad at home, the answer is no. At home it's like, yeah, for sure I want to sleep on a proper, uh, a proper mattress. Made out of foam or whatever. Ugh. Anyways, I'm um, gonna pack up and start heading down. I think I'm gonna skip breakfast because I'm not hungry at all. I've got some oatmeal, but I don't know, I'm just not feeling it at all. I feel pretty, pretty satisfied. Satiated. And uh, I'm gonna go down to this lake called Kubase. Really beautiful. <laughs> 